Hi there, it's Dave from Out There Adventures. Um, we're just in the woods, um, middle of middle of April. Um, lots of things happening in the woods at the moment. We've got the uh, celandines really carp up in the place now. Um, we've got some primroses that have been through for a while. Uh, up where we are, north of England, um, we've still got the the bluebells are just starting to flower now in, in little isolated pockets, but we're expecting in a in a few weeks time to be covered It'd be fantastic in this wood at that point um, there's lots of other plants that are just starting to come through of course we've had the dog's mercury for a while um, the wild garlic the lords and ladies and um, the wild garlic is just starting to flower now again in just little isolated pot a sort of um, microclimate going on um, so there's plenty of uh, plenty of plants about we've had a couple of kestrels a male and a female the male was uh, showing off to the female a bit, she was taking no notice at all. We've got pheasants having a barney occasionally. We've got a, um, a deer and we think possibly a youngster just at the bottom of the woods that we've just been a little bit careful about. Um, yesterday at this time of day, so it's now 3.40, we had um, just in the, the cherry tree that you can see in the distance there, we had uh, a bat flying about. It was actually slightly earlier than this yesterday, just uh, fluttering about in broad daylight. It was lovely to see. Um, so yeah, there's all sorts going on. But today, uh, at the request of um, a lady that I met on a, on a course recently, a lady called Alison, the course was something run by EQE Outdoors about uh, running therapeutic outdoor interventions. Absolutely brilliant course, I do recommend it. Um, uh, we formed a really quite amazingly close-knit tribe for, for a week um, of being together in the woods um, and one of the things she asked me to do was look at uh, the wagon stick pot hanger system so I thought I would just do a quick video just to show you how that looks um, and, and hopefully that'll be useful uh, if you're watching Alison okay so we'll have a go at that okay so typically to do a, a wagon stick I almost always use uh, hazel. Um, hazel is a fantastic uh, wood to use for the for the wagon stick for a number of reasons which I'll explain later. Um, there is virtually no hazel in the wood that I'm in currently but there is lots of sycamore that I can use um, and there's some ash, uh, some of the ashes showing signs of ash dieback so um, um, I haven't got a great issue with, with harvesting that stuff at the moment. Um, you know, some of it is certainly a long, a long way towards being on its way out. Um, so I'll use some little uh, bits and pieces. Great challenge, uh, John Ryder, a guy at uh, Woodcraft School, uh, often asked us to do this, was to find um, one stem that gave you all the pieces that you need. I'll show you all the pieces that you need later on, and then you can make your mind up about how easy that might be. Um, certainly I think it can be a challenge but in a good hazel woodland you could get away with it what I'll do is I'll gather the various sticks that we need explain them and you know explain why we need them and then put the whole thing together and show you how the pot hanger system works as the, the, the wagon stick <laughs>
bits and pieces. So I'll show you what we need. First of all, you want quite a long, straight-ish stick like this that um, doesn't necessarily need to be flexible, but you know, this one is it's a sycamore. Um, quite a length. This is um, the main element of the wagon stick and is where the pot hanger is going to be suspended from the end. There's a little bit more work to do on that yet, but I'll explain that shortly. The stick that will hang on the end, um, so it's effectively going to be hanging on the end of here, something like that, and you can see it has a hook on the bottom, which is where the pot's going to hang. Um, again, fairly straight with a little offshoot. Um, there's still a, a few cuts to do on there just to be able to hang the pot, but I'll show you those very shortly. So that's two there. Then you've either got two pegs like this, which you're going to cross over at the base end of the wagon stick so that when it's weighted with a full pan on this end it's not going to tip up. You can either use two sticks like this, just hammered in across each other, or you can use a stick like this that's going to trap the end of the wagon stick and be driven into the ground like that. Okay. Um, the other stick that you need is the upright where the pot hanger is going to be suspended like that. Imagine your fire just around about here. Um, you can see I've left some little um, branches slightly here that you can hang pots and pans and ladles and whatnot on, tea towel perhaps. Um, and I've chosen a stick that has uh, a branch off to the side rather than a Y shape like that. Um, you might get typically say uh, perhaps on a, on a sycamore or something like that. And um, the problem with those is if you try to bash that into the ground, they'll just split off. Whereas when you've got a centre, um, a main stem and then an offshoot, you can hammer that into the ground. You can see also that where I've needed to have chamfered the ends because they are going to take a bit of a bash and I've sharpened the other ends um, on various of these sticks just to be um, just to be a bit more efficient as they get bashed into the ground. Okay, so that's all we need. Um, other than our pot of course and our fire to suspend it above um, so I'll show you a little bit more about the particular cuts that we need to do on the main uh, wagon stick and on the actual pot hanger just to make that adjustable and secure um, and then I'll show you the whole um, setup once that's done. Okay for the actual pot hanger then so that the pot is going to hang by its handle here I'm starting to position these little cross cuts here with a hook um, and the hook will just allow um, the pan to be suspended. Uh, there's a couple on here already because I want it to be able to just to be able to adjust it up and down, depending on how much heat I need, or you know whether it's straight on the embers or above flames or whatever. Um, if you look at the way this is cut, then um, I've kind of I've done a cross uh, batten through if you need to, or just just for hand strength. And then I've taken out three of the four angles of that so that I'm left with this downward pointing um, beak here. And you can see the beak is slightly undercut so that it's not just flat there, it's cut inwards a little bit. So rather than, if you can see that there, rather than just being flat, it's cut inwards. Um, and that's really important to help it to hang um, with the additional cut that you put on the wagon stick. I'm just going to add another one on here then. You'll notice that the um, points for hanging are on the same side as where the pot's going to hang. You don't want them in any other position because the weight balance is much better there and it's less likely to fall off. You can see where I've put this one. It's actually just below a point where two stems came out, so that's quite a tough piece of wood. So that's less, even less likely to split when something's hanging on it. Okay, so you can see the, the two stems that were there. So dead simple then. All I've got to do is put a cut across the grain, put another cut across the grain, effectively making an X shape. Um, it's in roughly the same position as you can see, so there's the X shape that I've created just there. And what I'm now going to do is carve out the sides. And leave the beak okay so i'm going to leave a beak like that and you can see what i'm doing here is as i'm pushing the knife i just rotate the knife round so it meets that cut 
so just cut round slightly angle it and it meets the cut same from here so I'll just put a bit more of a stop there cut round angle it slightly and it should all come out pretty easily I want it fairly deep got to be careful with this piece of sycamore because it's um, very green and I suppose it could snap quite easily um, so once I've got all the cuts in place like that and then just going to slightly undercut the beak like that and then there you go I've got that ready and the other stick will be in position like that and I'll be able to hang the pot like that which I'll show you in a moment right okay so just imagine my fire is located let's just say somewhere like that I'm not going to go through how that's done you guys and uh, probably already know and there are several videos on my channel and on others if you, if you want to find out. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do then pop my upright securely in position. Remember, I've got that off, offshoot branch on the side there. Okay, my wagon stick is going to hang over the top of there like that and remember I want it roughly above where the fire is and I'm going to have to do some adjustment now I'm just turning it a little bit until it finds the way it naturally wants to hang if I put it like that and add weight it's going to spin like that so just find the way it naturally wants to hang and we've got a little bit of work to do on that end but I'll show you in a moment now at this end we are going to secure that either with that dead man's finger shenanigans there or with our two sticks crossed over like that okay um, I think in this case I'll just use the dead man's fingers so I'll just position it give it a tap make sure it's got the stick well held okay and then we just need to get to the other end to see what we need to do just to prepare them. Right, at the moment, currently, it's just got the end as I cut it off, but actually what I really want to do here is flatten that off in the position that it wanted to be in. So you can see I've kind of given it a horizontal top, I will have in a minute, hang on. There we go. So it's got a nice top that's horizontal with the ground, and our pot hanger is going to hang on there okay now it looks precarious I know and some people get really freaked out by it but actually it works pretty well the other thing I need to do just now is just take a slight upward cut there and that just takes away a little bit of the potential um, for this to leave her out of position okay so that's the position that it's going to be and now the next thing to do is just put a little a little hole there now actually some people say you can't it's a bit of a struggle to do this when you've got something with a soft pithy centre but I've never found that to be the case so um, thoughts on a postcard or comments below or whatever you do so all I've done is put a little um, notch there and the beak fits perfectly in there okay and then all I'm going to do is suspend my pot uh, from below and then the weight will hold that in place quite nicely so there you go um, the wagon stick, uh, pot hanger, beak, pot will hang here, fire just below it, there's my hand simulating uh, flames and that, that's exactly where your pot will sit, hanging by its handle, and that will hold really well, okay, um, obviously you can go for a thicker stick if you're a bit concerned about the weight of pot you're hanging on, then you can thicken everything up really, but with a, a, one of the small um, zebra billy cans for example and cooking for one that's entirely fine you can see also the benefit of this system is that it's just in that one single plane you haven't got a tripod to worry about around the fire you can hang pots and so on from here you can hang things from there it's quite a versatile little system it uses a small amount of uh, wood comp in comparison to setting up a tripod and so on and it's just a nice technique to use um, certainly for one or two people cooking around the fire for a few days the wagon stick seems to work really well um, so there you go uh, 
in terms of the history of the Wagon Stick, um, I'm not entirely sure. I, I remember John telling me that it was um, had Native American origins and also that it was considered bad luck to leave the standing when he left the camp um, in case anyone was uh, following you for nefarious reasons, I guess. Um, so, yeah, just err uh, on the side of caution and dismantle it at the end of the day. You know, what harm can it do? Um, so, yeah, there you go. Uh, any questions about that, any queries, any thoughts on how you might do it differently, please feel free to comment below. Um, and as always, you know, like and subscribe if that's your thing. And I look forward to seeing you on another video. Of course, I won't see you, you'll see me. I don't know why I said that. It's one of those things you see, I suppose. All right. Uh, so, and, and also, there you go. Uh, thanks for, to Alison for uh, mentioning what you'd like to see, how that's done. I hope that's useful for you, Alison. Looking forward to seeing you in September, possibly earlier. Take care. Take care.